now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my guest for today's broadcast, activist and federal whistleblower, Patriot Marine whistleblower, Stu Webb. Hello, Stu. Thank you for joining us again on the broadcast. Well, Bruce, you know it's my honor to be on with a patriot like you. Thank you very much, Stu. Thank you. I appreciate it. Now, I, I was trying to book Pete Santilli for today's show. Now, um, there is so much uh, heat that's being... Uh, that that's being placed on him he's saying that trolls are uh twisting up his words on the internet he's actually getting threats now i saw that he covered he covered this on uh yesterday's on a news piece yesterday on his show um uh, and you also spoke with him a, a couple of weeks ago on glenn's show can can you let us know um why why he uh he he is he is in this position where he's being uh, slammed by these trolls and these 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 stooges. Well, I talked to him last night. Talked to him the night before. I've talked to him probably every day for the past week. It's because of what he's doing. Anybody that's out there pounding on him, that is bringing the truth to light on who the criminals are in our government, the Bush crime syndicate, the Bush Clinton Obama crime syndicate. They're being targeted right now. That's part of the part of what's happening. And uh, you know, one of his things that he has really pushed lately has been the fact that you know Alex Jones, I believe, is one of the problems. Uh, Division Number Five FBI stooge that portrays around to be a patriot when in fact he isn't. You can always tell by his actions. It's always mainstream media that this guy puts out uh, spin doctor crap. And uh, then, of course, there's never any solutions with him, never to fix the problem. It's always the fear factor, and that's what they, 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 you know, the enemy has always played on, the fear factor. Just like the school shootings, it's the fear factor. Oh, the boogeyman's going to come to get you, so you better turn in your guns. And this is uh, one of the things that Pete's having a problem with. Uh, you know, he's been having some real people on, and, and uh, I've been on a show, and he's done a show with me, and... You know, vice versa, and he's putting out truth. And uh, one of the most powerful things he's been pounding is, that, you know, what Judy Woods has been saying about the death rate at 911. And that's what they don't want out. They don't want the truth to come out about 911 and who was behind it and all the other. But, uh, you know, he is also aware of the connections with the Israeli Mossad in doing these recent school shootings with Daddy Bush. And it's all over the Palestinian statehood. Israel's retaliating against the United States because it's losing control. And if people were to go to an interview that I did with Gordon Duff of Veterans Today, Gordon runs a spook operation. He admits it. He's part of the government. He works at the Department of Defense. He's a counterintelligence for the U.S. government. He admits it. He admits most of the people on Veterans Today are. And uh, that's in the interview that he gets into my ex-in-laws, uh, Leonard Millman and Elaine Millman, and that Leonard Millman and his sidekick, APAC uh, director Larry Mizell, are trying to decapitate the United States government in behalf of Israel, in behalf of the Russian mob. They are the Russian mob. Leonard Millman, uh, he didn't say it in the interview, but I'm aware of it was running around now, or now I'm aware of it, running around diplomatic passport, uh, Russian passport. And he had been hauling drugs for years and was all tied up with the mob, the Khazarians that were operating out of Denver, Colorado, that owned Silverado, had Keating uh, and the savings alone scandal, all the other stuff. They've been in bed with everybody. They're the ongoing current financial crimesters, uh, banksters that have robbed and looted this country, uh, creating these artificial mortgages. But they've committed treason and sedition. And they're all tied together. Leonard Millman and Larry Mizell with APAC. And uh, APAC's got hit teams on uh, top-level government officials. And uh, they're tied to Netanyahu. And they're tied with Daddy Bush and the whole Bush crime syndicate, that is, Junior, George W. Bush, uh, Neil Bush, Jeb Bush, etc. And it's all this narcotics uh, uh, and narcotics money laundering, narcotics importation in the U.S. It's, uh, you know, the narcotics coming out of Afghanistan. Uh, it uh, is, uh, you know, the, the financial crimes that they've done, every financial crime there's been, uh, since the 1980s have been involved with these same men that I just mentioned. And uh, they're tied to Netanyahu of Israel, and they have, uh, and Netanyahu has acted as a goon for them, a stooge for them, for the crime syndicate. Uh, and it's all intertwined and tied to the Jonathan Pollard spy ring, a 
against America, stealing nuclear secrets, uh, stealing nuclear codes, uh, stealing uh, uh, mapping of uh, various things that went on in the Middle East as far as our naval forces were concerned that Pollard got arrested for. And uh, uh, it ties in with the, the Russian mob and, uh, and Millman back to Denver and the Bushes back to Denver and Neil being there right in the, in the middle of it with them and everyone else. But it's the, the treason and sedition that has, uh, has occurred. And there's a 16 intelligence agencies report that came out about 90 days ago, and that's one of the reasons that our CIA director, Petraeus, was outed by them uh, uh, over a so-called sexual affair. And it was over the fact that he was uh, one of the leads in that uh, in that uh, intelligence agency report that pointed the finger to Leonard Millman, Larry Mizell, APEC, and all the Bushes. I call him Bush and my four sons and his stupid daughter. <laughs> and uh, that's where it lies. And uh, it's it's the treason, sedition, and Bill and Hillary Clinton are involved in it. And, uh, you know, they, they've they been trying to start this war uh, uh, in, in, in the Middle East for quite some time. And, you know, Obama, he's no better. He's a stooge for them, and he has been. They've had control of him. But uh, he's listening to U.S. Generals Dempsey. And others, and uh, listen, it was listen to Petraeus saying no Middle East war. That they're lying. They're part of this espionage ring against us. We are not going to support them. So we have a big battle going on within the government, should we say, of uh, the good guys versus the crime syndicate. And uh, I think if you, uh, if a person were to go to my website, stuweb.com, I have two, uh, at the top there's a, a, a picture of Kennedy and the Revolution right underneath it, there's two columns. And on the left column, if you were to scroll down and listen to uh, those interviews, the one, uh, there's there's several of them, and I, I try to keep my interviews on YouTube, I'm not up to date right now on them, but, and I will be by tonight or tomorrow, but in that left column there's an interview with Gordon Duff. That's probably one of the better interviews I've ever done where I've sat back and I've just let someone else speak because he was willing to do that on my behalf. Uh, and you can hear in there where I've given been given credibility for my exposure of what I've done to him, stepping in front of the freight train, as he put it. If it wasn't for me, they wouldn't have ever known who the crime syndicate leaders were. So I thank Gordon for that interview. But uh, he gets into the interview in specific detail, including Romney being one of their stooges and money laundering from that Afghan war over there. It's all over drugs. And, uh, uh, you know, we got Senator McCain, we got Senator Lieberman, and others. Well, Stu, we, the we remember uh, so. Pat, Pat Tillman. You remember Pat Tillman, correct? Yes. Yeah, yes. I mean, that is a prime example of uh, he saw what was going on. He was going to come back and report it, and the establishment could not have a high-profile figure like T uh, Tillman, a, a star athlete, come back and say, hey, there's no Al... CIA or Al Qaeda. Al Qaeda, yes. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Al Qaeda. There is no. The boogeyman, right? Yeah, they were guarding a, a fields, fields of uh, uh, of heroin. So I mean, you know that everybody knows that. Uh, well, we hope we're, we're trying to get people to know the the brave the brave sacrifice that many people have done to put that information out. Uh, now I wanted to ask you uh, about. Uh, Again, about uh, Pete Santilli. Now, he's done an excellent job at exposing Jones as of late. He, uh, he was the, 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 the source for me when I, when I uh, did the, the research on uh, Maroney, who was, uh, through the WikiLeaks, anonymous hacking of uh, this private intelligence company, uh, Stratafor. They linked uh, Maroney to Parker Media, which is a... Uh, uh, a contract uh, uh, agency or a contract for the, a contractor for the for the CIA, correct? Right, right, they are. So, so right there, I mean, you have you have uh, Santelli saying that you know that you have Maroney, who is a, a a member of the federal government, walking around parading, uh, you know, in his office, like he like I've heard him state, and then I've heard you state he's uh, he he's his handlers Norvell, and this man is still. Still on the radio, calling himself a patriot. Uh, well, what? there's 
energy, you have to look at all the other ones on the radio and look at all the ones mainstream media. And Bruce, for an edification, I, I'm a little bit older than you. I'm 58, and I've been doing this for 28 years, and only by the grace of God am I alive, and I know that. And uh, the second part of it is, is I've, I've, I've graduated for, uh, with a Ph.D. Uh, from the University of, uh, of the Bush Clinton Millman Crime Syndicate. Uh, so I have a little bit more knowledge than the average guy out here. And you have to look back at what happened to this country. Okay, in 81, Bush arrives. Is actually the Kennedy killing uh, is what is what started it. And then you move forward, and it was Bush takeover in 81. Then he wants to eliminate Reagan and become the power keg. Hinckley's, uh, you know, who shot Reagan, uh, is down there 40, you know, at the birthday party. Neil Bush the night of the shooting. Daddy Bush was having lunch with Hinckley's father in the in the vice president's house at the time uh, in Washington, his office. Uh, you have to look at all the connections to all this. Okay, he wanted to take over then, but he was the he was the uh, shadow government uh, behind the government, Daddy Bush, and that's where what they called infamously they called it Iran Contra. It was the theft of they limited the liability by calling it the words Iran Contra, and it was Ed Meese, the Attorney General, was covering up for him, was the one who came out there and said that instead of saying you know this was a full blown illegal operation called Operation Black Eagle that was outlawed by the Bowen Amendment, nineteen. 83, and that they're shipping uh, weapons uh, out of the country, they're bringing drugs in, uh, they're profiteering from it, and it's the vice president, his, his uh, buddies Ollie North and Donald Gregg and his sons uh, George W. And, and Jeb Bush and Neil Bush and everybody, and uh, of course Neil was working for my ex in law because he was the money launderer, he was the banker Melman was at MDC Holdings, uh, uh, the parent company of, of Silverado and Imperial Savings of California, and many, many, many of the institutions that went down. But they were also involved in security fraud. They were involved in savings and loan fraud. They were involved in junk bond daisy chain fraud. They were involved in massive, massive security fraud out the Zuzu, taking over AIG illegally and 5,000 insurance companies becoming the largest one through frauds. Uh, and then they were the bank bailout scandals. I mean, you have to look at all. It goes on today. Iran Contra has never stopped. The words, uh, what they dubbed as Iran Contra, it was uh, this Operation Black Eagle, the theft of America. And if you look at 1981, the General Accounting Office was saying that they only controlled 1% of the population, only controlled 20% of the economy. Today, they're in control of 95% of the economy. 400 men make more money than half of the uh, 300 million population we have, they're making more money than 150 million people. And what had happened was that 1988, when Bush arrives, actually in total power, he was in power behind the scenes with the shadow government, but in, in uh, uh, 1988, when he arrived, uh, he changed the racketeering offices, got rid of them, the, the 10 federal racketeering offices across the country. The only one that left intact was the labor racketeer now the Philadelphia. I actually dealt with uh, one of the one of the um, U.S. attorneys over there, and she actually went back and prosecuted one of them, uh, one of the Iran Contra players out of Utah that was tied to security frauds with with uh, Leonard Melman and Daddy Bush and Holly North and everybody, and uh, they arrested him and the whole nine yards, and then they turned around and they killed him in a jail cell. But that was the only federal racketeering office left. They, they got rid of him, and they had what they called the God Squad, Set up, which was Lee Reddick at the public, the Inspector General at the Public Integrity Section of the U.S. Department of Justice. Uh, he was in control of the cover up, the constant cover up. Now they got a guy named David Mann up there in charge of that. And David Mann laundered bribes from my ex in law, which I have the proof and evidence of through Tom Berg of Boulder, Colorado, an attorney through a company called M&L Business Machines in Denver that collapsed back in 1990. Uh, 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 for Spoli check kiting. Uh, uh, it goes way back. But what had happened to this country was not only that and the checks and balances taken out within the Justice Department and having the control at the Inspector General's office and the control of like Eric Holder today that keeps covering up everything and, and federal regulators being ordered not to do anything like on all this bank bailout. That all these banks are, should be prosecuted but it comes back to the Bushes. The second part of it was they took over the news media. And this was where it happens in with Alex Jones and others. They bought up with, if people remember, back in the early 90s, there was that takeover of Hollywood with the Brothmans, with Millman. Uh, his cutout was the guy that bought out uh, uh, Disneyland. And uh, I'm trying to think of his name. Uh, Jewish guy bought out Disneyland.
was in land, and he bought out uh, the Disney Corp and ABC News. And they had Ted Turner, and they were prop they were pumping up Ted Turner and buying his stock with drug money. And they took over Ted Turner eventually and shoved him out the door. And uh, they took over all the media. Well, look at the media today. Are they saying anything of truth other than occasion, you know, there's school shootings or there's hurricanes or there's tornadoes or whatever they report on that? But they're talking heads up there. They're sitting there talking their agenda every day of their crap, like we're going to fall off a physical cliff. We're going to fall off a physical cliff. The only people who are going to fall off a physical cliff are the international bankers because of other things that are being that are happening behind the scenes right now. It isn't going to affect us. Uh, in any way, shape, or form. The only thing that's going to affect anything if they fall off the physical cliff is it's going to fall off of uh, a lot of people that need uh, need uh, uh, help from the government right now that are unemployed. But they're worried about the fact that it's going to affect their ways of money laundering and their estates and other taxation is the real big problem there. And the second part of it is a half a trillion dollars a year in defense budget that they've been stealing every year from. I mean, if you go back to what Catherine Fitz said, uh, a former uh, a HUD inspector or a HUD undersecretary that was sent in after I caused the 1989 HUD hearings that caused the independent prosecutor to be appointed that, that gave me the federal whistleblower status, uh, she was sent in to Catherine Fitz. Uh, uh, trying to think hey, of her site right off she's, she was she's been on the, the Alex Jones show, hasn't she? she? She's been on a lot of different programs, but, you know, she's out there pushing her right now, her her way of getting the finance uh, back in this country. But the deal is, is she, Catherine, had, I, I had gotten, she came to me like 10 years after the event, after she got basically fired from HUD for trying to do her job of cleanup. She came to me for help, and on my site, stuweb.com, on the front page in the left column, you see uh, additional breaking, or you see table of contents. If you go to that and, and go down to the third column on the right, uh, go down to HUD, you'll see a story on her and how I helped her back then. But, but, uh, Catherine had reported that there was missing, uh, $3.2 trillion out of the Pentagon budget. The books were cooked by Dynacorp, who's the private accounting firm for the U.S. government and almost all the agencies. And that how, uh, $3.2 trillion from 1991 through 2001 were missing out of the Pentagon. And then you have her also reporting that there was $60 billion one year off the books of HUD. And then another year in the 1990s, there was $80 billion missing out of HUD. I mean, it's just like Dynacorp says, oh, we're going to take the numbers here. And all of a sudden, you got X number of dollars in the Pentagon each year. And it changes. And all of a sudden, the money just, the numbers just change right then and there. And they pop. At the bread. Well, that's what's been going on. That's one of the reasons on 911 it wasn't some damn airplane. If an airplane hit the Pentagon, there would have been wings broken off, a tail section, just like John Lear, my, my friend who was the Area 51, the greatest pilot in the world, the highest rated pilot in the entire world, John Lear of the Las Vegas, personal friend of mine. He was on a show with me a while back. I have it in my, uh, uh, on my front of my uh, news site, if you scroll way down, maybe a month ago, a month and a half ago, I had him on. He talks about this. He wrote an affidavit for court about it, that if any planes even hit the World Trade Center, the tail section would have broke off and the arms or the uh, wings off of the, off the uh, airplanes. That didn't happen. And it, with the Pentagon, it wasn't a missile hit. It, that was a spin doctor information by Hillary Clinton crowd uh, after there wasn't any airplane sections or anything else. It was an energy weapon they shot at that damn thing. And why did they pop the Pentagon in that specific spot that was under construction by a bin Laden construction company, the so-called terrorist on 911, that was tied in with, with our, uh, uh, Carlisle Group, the defense contractor, Daddy Bush, and Leonard Millman's defense contractor that was proffered up with drug money to begin with, became a defense contractor, narcotics money. Why is it that that one spot in the Pentagon was hit? It's because that's where the accountants were going over the books of the missing $3.2 trillion. So they had to wipe out the records and the people that were inside there. There was a number of reasons they did 911 in the towers. Besides investigations that were going on, and there's a couple videos up on my site, there's video showing an energy weapon that was from a hotel. It's been released. It's up there a month ago. I put it up. Several of the new videos. Uh, Veterans Today also put those videos up. Uh, Gordon Duff, uh, 
you can also see, uh, you know, uh, uh, of the tracks. If you go back to, go to my internet site, since we're talking about 911, and, and go into the right column, scroll down to September the 11th of this year. September the 11th. I did, I, I put up a lot of the links that I have in there. Leonard Millman through Waymark Foundation financed the whole terrorist attack on 911. Who was Leonard Millman? My ex in law. Who was he? He was the one that had Neil Bush working at Silverado for him, the one that's been involved in all these scams, including the bank bailouts, the current ones, writing mortgages on houses in Southern California that were never built by Richmond Homes and Ponderosa Homes and Wood Brothers Homes and Red Hawk Homes and uh, KB homes, and then they would turn around and sell those, uh, bundle them up in, uh, in securities with legitimate mortgages to sell them as bundles. But they also were buying mortgages through their asset investors, MDC asset investors, the parent of Silverado and the parent of Richmond Homes. They were also buying those uh, mortgages up around the country from other lenders. And then they were duplicating those mortgages, and that's what led to this uh, complete uh, bank collapse that myself and Interpol agents tried to bring them to uh, financial ruins through bankruptcy court in 2007 and 2008, and Bush, Melvin's partner, turns around, and what does he do? He gives him a bank bailout. And then they robbed all and robbed and looted the funds there. Now, there's other interesting things about all that bank bailout is a fact that nobody's ever been prosecuted. And you can go to my website, stuweb.com, left-hand column, Stu Web Versus. Go in there and look at the link or click on additional break news uh, and look at the link Stu, Larry Mizell. Nobody... Right to the SEC reporting the companies. How come you won't prosecute uh, these companies? Stu, nobody, nobody's been prosecuted. But there, there have, there has been sent to a, a federal court. And again, that information comes from Dr. Judy Wood, the, the energy, uh, the energy weapon that, that, that we were referring to. She, she well, says. Yeah, that's part of the heat. Yes, and that's part of the heat that Pete Santelli has had by promoting her and putting her on the air. Now, you know, Judy Woods, I don't know her personally. As a matter of fact, I posted her book on my site yesterday. I, I don't know her. I put in there that there's, you know, there's, there's in that left column, there's about uh, 20 books, and there's about five of them that I had nothing to do with, but there was information in there relating to other things that I was aware of. So this is the reason I published those books, but there's like 16, uh, 17 other books I've been involved with. Some of my name appears, some of them it doesn't appear because I asked my name not to appear in it, exactly. but I gave them information for the books. Those are the most powerful books that tells what has happened to America in the past 30 friggin' years. Who are the people are, who the players are. It keeps coming back the same people. It's treason and sedition. It's espionage against the United States of America and it involves this crime syndicate called the Bush Clinton Millman Crime Syndicate with Larry Mizell involved. APEC, the Israeli, American Israeli PAC, the lobbyist group tied to Benjamin Netanyahu, the ones that want this one world government control crap. Now, Stu, you, you mentioned, you mentioned Netanyahu and you mentioned uh, Israel retaliating against the United States. Now, can we? I I covered earlier in the the broadcast uh, a story uh, where uh, the a European court had ruled that the CIA's torture methods were were inhumane. They were they were in, insufficient, inhumane. They, there was no need for them, and it, it, that happened right on the fourteenth, the same day as that atrocious. Uh, depraved shooting in uh, in Connecticut. Now, I also covered uh, uh, a story from Silver Underground, which stated uh, a new uh, uh, ID law, na a national ID type system. Can you let our listening audience know how both uh, uh, the, the, it's referred to in the in, in biblical terms as the mark of the beast, but really this RFID chip, how it it, it comes into play with these MK Ultras. Well, let me explain to you that first, you had a several part question. You are correct about the war crimes. Francis Boyle, I've talked to him, he worked with Henry Gonzalez. I worked with Henry before his death when he was House Banking Chairman. That's, uh, you know, because I caused those Silverado hearings, the HUD hearings, the Denver Airport hearings, and the Keating 5 MDC Holdings hearings, which had John McCain right in the target. He should have gone to prison. He didn't. But Boyle's has him, yes, 
they have them because they had to go outside the country. Bowles even said he would represent me on my cases and so forth and, and trying to bring them down, but he couldn't even do it in the U.S. because there's no court of law in the U.S. that's even fair. It's all post crime syndicate controlled. So he went to international court back in the spring. He got the indictments uh, in another country. Now they've moved him uh, from that other country of war crimes, and, uh, et cetera, to The Hague. And I, I reported on, on December the 18th that People Go Veterans Today had an excellent piece up there about his his recent uh, 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 filings. Now, go the second part of the question, I believe, was to deal with the mind control chips and so forth, or the school shootings. The ongo uh, ongoing current school shootings, if you go to my website again, stuweb.com, right there in either column, you'll see a picture of it's a, it's a shame on you, Israel. And because I put it in the left column underneath, Gordon Duff, and he wrote several articles. Mike Harris broke it out that Israel was behind it. They are counterintelligence agents, both of them, working for the government, for the Department of Defense, and they have nailed Israel on this. And if you go in and look at what Tom Hennigan, my friend, had, uh, him and I have worked together for years, if you look at what he's got, psych ops, wet op, or black ops, etc., uh, uh, lands his mother work for DARPA. So it's come to the DARPA game, setting them down in the chairs. If you look at the school sh or the shooting in, the, in Aurora, Colorado, it was also uh, once again uh, set them down in the chairs, mind chipped and controlled. Now there's an interesting thing that I found along the way of all this uh, is that there's a gal named. Fran Townsend. Fran Townsend's Department of Homeland Security. She works for the CIA. She's a spin doctor for the Bush Crime Syndicate and has been for a number of years. She was George W. Bush's National Security Advisor. And every time before these shootings occurred since the spring, can Fran Townsend would come on CNN as their national security correspondent. That link is also there. You see the, uh, the link says Fran Townsend on it. It's got mine and Hennigan's postings in there. You might look at those. But she comes on, and then within days, there's shootings. There's repeated shootings. There's killings in America. And she's, oh, Iran's going to start attacking schools and shopping centers in America. That's bullshit. That was them doing that. That was them orchestrating that. And I can go back further, and I know we only got a few minutes left. I have a videotape called CIA Terror in America. Go to YouTube. Uh, dot com forward slash stu web one and go all the way down to the uh, go down a little ways and you'll see it i put it on your facebook page maybe you can put it in reference on your page for today's broadcast yeah, absolutely so people can look at it in 1999 i went or 1998 99 i went to the fbi after i got wind of this guy uh, shooting up everybody out the jewish community center in los angeles i turned around and i went to the fbi and i said look Bush is behind this. E Systems, Dallas, Texas, the guy's dead now that was my source. I went and gave them the information on all the shootings that occurred for the next two and a half months. Every one of them. I told them after the third one, they said, we can't talk to you anymore. I said, why not? Because we've been told not to. They didn't want to hear about it. I was telling them to the day where the shooting would occur. It was going to be in Fort Worth at a school. A Christian school would be hit next. And I said, I don't know the guy's name. All I know it's going to be on such and such a day, the whole bit. So I made a video later about it, informing the people to protect my own butt as well. And I went on national radios all across the country, screaming and yelling several days in advance, just like an videotape that I made. So th this, is, this is controlled shootings. And where I say controlled, these were, with these systems, these were people they set in the chair, told them they were in the military, we want you in military intelligence. But they tested out, they knew they could mind ship them and control them like a Manchurian candidate. So why they got them set programming, extracting 80% of their memory into a chip, figuring out what triggers them off, set them down in front of a big screen TV with a drug, and they knock them out, and they slip a chip behind your ear with a little syringe and a little needle prick, and that's it, and they got a chip there. So then they can control them. Well, they would have somebody take and make a phone call from East Systems, and they would set them off, and that, that would put them in the mind control, Manchurian Canada, the movie's very accurate. And so it put it in that mode. And then the next one would be another phone call, telling them where to go and what to do, and they would go do it. And 
these were people that were chipped. Some of them blew themselves away, shooting themselves in the head. That was when the chip went off from a satellite, uh, E-Systems uh, uh, satellites that they control, the West Star satellite system. This also controls the voting booths in America and has for years, and listening on your phones and everything. They'd set those chips off in these people's ear, and it rattled their friggin' brain to where they couldn't handle the pain no longer, so they'd shoot themselves in the head. Some of them they wanted caught, some of them they didn't want caught. Now they're putting them in, and have been for the past 10 years, they've been setting them down, kids that are on drugs, kids that need mental rehabilitation, they're calling it, ordered by some judge someplace, they're taking them in to these different these different uh, uh, mental health facilities around the United States, county and state mental health, and they're being programmed. And they're sitting there making new Manchurian candidates out of kids now that they started this program 10 years ago. One of them, I know who the gal is that was supposedly going to hit me. And I got a phone call about it, Bruce. And a week later, this B-I-T-C-A shows up in my neighborhood. I had to chase her off. Wow. And she was going to either leave or she was going to die or get arrested. Take your choice. That's that's insane, and you know all of these uh, cases. The the individual is on psychotropic drugs. Everybody and their uh, and their their mother wants to call for uh, for gun control, but you know it's crazy. They're trying the gun control. The Lanza's mother, the one in the the Connecticut shooting, she worked for DARPA. DARPA's running the mind control now of these kids sitting down in the chair. Look at the connections of the DARPA program in the Aurora shooting and the shrink out there at the University of Denver where that kid who shot up everybody in Aurora right. was, was having counseling. DARPA, the Defense Research Project. And what I find more eerie... Controls it. It's 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 all over uh, Hollywood, and people want to say, "Oh, it's a coincidence." It's a coincidence that in the Dark Knight Rises, they name a whole area of Gotham City uh, Sandy Hook. I mean, is that a coincidence, Stu? Well, it, there is, there is, is, and isn't. They do that for the conspiracy nutcases who go out there and point to that. But there is some subliminal to this. If a person looks at what has gone on in every one of these shootings this year, they have fallen on satanic holidays. Go up the exactly. internet, Google, pull up satanic holidays, and go back to the school shooting dates. Every one of them have been on satanic holidays. Bush is a Satanist. So's Leonard Melman. So's not Yahoo. They're bloodsuckers. Henry Kissinger, the, what they call the Council of Thirteen. Melman, uh, Meyer Rothschild, uh, Leonard Melman, uh, uh, David Rockefeller, uh, Daddy Bush, uh, Anzwar Ben Shri of Israel that controls the controls uh, not Yahoo through Melman, uh, who's the uh, who's the head rabbi. Pope Benedict, your current pope. They're all Satanist. They're bloodsuckers. They sit and carve up children on satanic holidays and drink their blood. They serve Satan. It's 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 incredible to to, to, to hear subliminal this through the, through information. Hollywood, that movie that was subliminal, and I tell you, there's they they've done other movies that are subliminal that have ties to a lot of other stuff in the past. So when they when they come along, oh what a way! You know, it's it's a lie. Is Daddy Bush used to tell friends of mine that worked for him, uh, that worked for, for Casey, William Casey, the CIA director at the time, Daddy Bush was uh, uh, vice president, of which Daddy Bush killed Casey, okay, put him in the coma in the hospital and the whole bit because he was going to tell the truth about Iran-Contra and what Bush had done. Uh, many of those people told me the same thing. Daddy Bush says, the American people, he says, uh, the bigger the lie we tell them, the more they believe it. He says if we don't tell them a the big lie, they won't believe it. Exactly. Well, he's not doing so hot. He, he does. He's probably not going to get to drink his uh, his cup of blood uh, by the end of this year. Going into next year. Uh, well, the, the world... you know, there's a saying he made, Bruce, and I'm not trying to interrupt you. He made a saying, profound statement to many, many people. He says, and one of them was Sarah McClendon, the White House grand dam of the Washington Press Corps in 1992. I knew her. She wrote about me when I was hiding as, a, as in a uh, whistleblower when they were trying to make me a political prisoner to shut me up uh, from the cause of most congressional investigations in, in 89 through 91. 
and she sat down with George Bush in June of 1992 in the White House, and she says, George Bush, she said in an interview he consented to to find out what she was after, and it was over Iraq Gate, Iran Contra, and everything, and a whole bunch of other stuff, and she says, George Bush, what would the American people ever do if they find out the truth about Iraq Gate? Selling, you know, biological chemical agents to Iraq and about Iran Contra, theft of American establishment of guns for drug network and the takeover by a bunch of espionage, uh, D heads. Okay. His answer was, he says, Sarah, if the American people ever find out what we have done, they will chase us down the streets and lynch us. Well, I'm one of the Americans that are out here with my duct tape. You can imagine what duct tape, a four dollar roll of duct tape does besides makes handcuffs. Makes a good <laughs> noose. <laughs> well I hear ya uh, he uh He's not doing so hot, and the world definitely doesn't need uh, uh, d diabolical scumbags like that uh, parading around uh, this this planet any 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 longer than than they they, this they guy need has them. Killed Bruce. Uh, I've heard numbers from from people in the intelligence community. If you look at all the numbers of all the deaths he has caused all of his life since 1945, being a brown shoe boy in the old OSS, then it later becomes the 79 brown shoe boys become the Kissinger crowd and him and the others become the the, the, the Pegasus group of CIA when they created CIA with Alan Dulles. Okay? And if you look at all the deaths of the people worldwide that he has ordered the murder of, it's in the millions of people have died because of his illegal wars like Iraq 1. That was all illegal. Like Iraq 2, ordering his son to do that and portraying the, the incident where they were involved in downing the towers on 911. Okay, and killing three plus thousand Americans on the day of 9 one the And the deaths that have preceded 9-11. Uh, 9-11 is used as justification for these unconstitutional wars, so he's he's killed billions. Or millions. Killed billions and, and where it comes to now, where it comes to now and today and where we sit is they're creating the fear factor with the shootings to take the guns. Why? They're afraid of the American people because there's over a hundred million Americans out here awake to what the problem is. They may not know all the answers. They may not have graduated like I have from the after 28 years as a federal whistleblower, staying alive, 30 some odd attempts on my life. Uh, graduating from the University of uh, Bush, Melbourne, Clinton, crime syndicate. Uh, you know, a lot of people uh, are still in their diapers of listen to Alex Jones, and they still got their head up their rear end listening to Bill O'Reilly and Glenn Beck and all the other uh, uh, profound, uh, should we say, FBI stooges and CI stooges that are out there and the mainstream media. Well, they're getting the truth today, like off of your radio show, Rick Santelli's show, and Mike Harris, and many, many other people across the spectrum, many of the patriots that are out here. They should all be listening to those programs and get a lot of truth. But we have about 100 million Americans out here that are pretty much awake to what's going on, and they're fed up with the crap. They don't have a life. Most Americans do not have a life. They don't have a future because these people have taken over the economy of the United States of America. They and own 97% of it. And they're kicking us out of our homes and... Derivatizing the debt, uh, it's, it's, uh, you know, the, having us in complete and total fear, hyperinflation, it, you, you're right, uh, but, but it is our job as, as freedom loving Americans to keep our citizenry informed of, of the treason that is running rampant in our republic. Uh, Stu, I would like to thank you for uh, being a guest and a friend as always to my show. Thank you. Well, I appreciate that. One last word if I may. Of course, of course. Control is, Ill, is treason, and keeping a gun is illegal. And remember this, folks. One day soon, in the next few months, we will have to take it to the streets, and there will be a civil revolution in this country. Everybody knows it's coming. Everybody in all the intelligence agencies know it and everything. It's going to be a civil war. Go out there. It's not black against white, white against black, against Asians, uh, Hispanics, whatever. We're all Americans. It's us against this new world order that's running your government. So when this happens, go pick up all your public officials, take them in, shove them into a jail cell along with all the cops and FBI agents and all the judges and everybody else in your county, your state, your federal level. Shove them into your local jail cell. 
and now take over the media immediately, shove them into jail cells, the ones that don't want to cooperate, and take over the media and make announcements that judge so-and-so is on trial or cop so-and-so is on trial or congressman so-and-so is on trial. And if you have any evidence to bring it forth to the grand jury in the next two weeks to make your case. That's uh, how we are going to have to handle it and clean it up. Announce new elections in your own districts. Let your candidates come out. They're good, honest people because after that happens, there will be good, honest people. We are going to have to, to back up what is going to happen. There is a movement within side of the United States government to clean the problem up. There are those within the military, there are those within the U.S. intelligence good guys that are that will be forced to put a halt to it, and they're going to need the American people to back them up. And I'm saying the backup. I just told you what to go do. Absolutely. I'm certainly backing them up to do it as well. We need our, our, our good people in, in the military to, to help the American citizenry. Thank you, Stu, for being a guest on our show today. We appreciate it.